J Joseph, yeah, you speak for Xinfen, which is a blockchain company and our partner in various uh, enterprises, including um, you've got a strong interest in the developing world. Uh, could you tell us how all this links in with digital currencies? In fact, we did have a section here about the digital economy because it's a, a huge preoccupation for some of the central banks and the public sector institutions that we're dealing with. They know that disruption is coming sometimes in the area of finance and currencies that they're dealing with. They, they, they would like to control it more as well. Can you relate your business with what we've been talking about just now? Uh, sure, there's a, a maturity when, when we talk about blockchain. When it first came out, it was the uh, public blockchain, where the distributed ledger, the documentation, uh, you can reference what happened between the transaction between participants. <clears throat> so that you know, uh, led to cryptocurrencies being developed, decentralized payments, and so on. But then it's matured to the stage where you can have permission blockchain. So enterprise um, and what we call the hybrid blockchain that gives you both the uh, speed and transparency that the public chain would give you. And then you have the security and then you have the privacy that the permission chain can give you. So we looked at uh, enterprise uh, blockchain and, and what the applications were for businesses, for governments that can offer a permissioned uh, uh, based benefits using the blockchain technology. So in regards to, um, I guess, the crypto talk, when we looked at what the central banks um, are looking for, they're not adverse to crypto per se or even to blockchain. <clears throat> what they're really looking for is a crypto payment that will allow, instead of a cryptocurrency, so that'll settle back into fiat. They're looking for um, a permissioned uh, trusted nodes so they would decide on who owns the master nodes and the trusted nodes. And really looking at uh, real-time growth settlement. So these are um, ways that can actually be done on a, on, on a, on a blockchain. But, uh, so we take it out from a cryptocurrency to more of a crypto payment. We look at um, the largest global uh, challenge that faces the world right now, which is the global infrastructure gap. And uh, can blockchain uh, facilitate the financing of, that, of those projects. We see that, you know, we're talking about the dry powder. We're talking about uh, the global demand for infrastructure projects, uh, numbers range. So let's say there's 68 trillion um, worth of projects in, uh, in, in the world, uh, 15 trillion um, by 2040, and as you mentioned, 1.7 uh, just for the emerging Asian uh, market, year on year, by the way, year over year. And then you have $80 trillion of the OECD countries in pension obligations that uh, they're looking for ways that, uh, you know, they can satisfy that mandate. Insurance companies, too, with, uh, with the annuities. And they look at where the GDP is happening, and Asia is where it's happening, right? So with the urbanization, um, rapid development population growth, the move towards uh, upward mobility in the middle class, um, there's a big demand for infrastructure. So we were looking and seeing, well, what... Uh, what is it going to take if we can we see that demand in Asia, we see the um, financial capabilities and, um, and, uh, and, the, and the pool of capital, can that be crowded in? And the issue comes back to that uh, the GPI report talks about that, is that um, most of the global public investors entertain projects at the secondary phase once the revenue streams have been um, well established. But where these projects really need to be coming in is at the, um, at the green field or the brown field at the early stage of the projects. But only 25% of GPIs actually do invest in early stage projects. And the reason why is because of risk. So we said, well, can blockchain help to de-risk uh, new project finance? And um, can it lower transactional costs? Can it automate and streamline the processes? Can it um, provide real-time... Um, asset uh, performance data? Can it create an exchange moving from early stage investment uh, projects to where they become... And your answer to all that is yes, 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 and yes, is it? So we're hoping. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but, well, look, uh, I, I'm going to leave it at that because I'd like to leave room for questions. I mean, I think it's an incredibly interesting idea that blockchain can be the answer to this conundrum that we've outlined. Um, so, Joseph, I will allow you to have the last word. Are you actually speaking to people like the World Bank and 
the other development institutions to try to take out some of those loans which are no longer risky from their books and can indeed be sold on to uh, insurance companies who want a utility type of rate of return. Uh, and, and is it really so that blockchain can technology can actually make a difference to things like that? Do, 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 the, people, do the people believe you when, you when you go to them with a claim like that? And also, can you come back next year and tell us whether it's succeeding? <laughs> so yes to the use cases next year. <laughs> I'm talking to them now. So. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, so we, we are. There are several uh, different projects that we're engaged in uh, around the world. And we'd love to, uh, I think, uh, as, as a, as a follow-on to this, to actually produce a publication uh, with those use cases, more of a demonstration of, uh, of, of the applications or, or the dApps that we call them. Uh, very simple things uh, in, in, when it comes to the infrastructure is that it's physical and it's uh, illiquid. But if you can look at asset tokenization of those physical infrastructure and you can tack onto that a technology la layer where you have IoT integrations, so if you have a water treatment facility and you put the sensors on those ones, if you have build a roadway and you put sensors on those ones, the commercial viability of that infrastructure project is not just going to come uh, and be funded by the uh, tariff rates, but they can be um, also funded by the licenses, the commercial licenses that go on that. And then that helps the financiers to have a better ROI um, of, of, those, of those infrastructure projects. But it uh, really is a conversation. We are, it's, it's, blockchain is the scent. Um, so it's a very early stages. Uh, so we've, we've created a prototype that allows for beneficiaries, uh, financiers, and suppliers um, to create their workflows on a platform. But uh, it's just a prototype. Uh, what needs now, now is a, adoption in a sandbox environment um, where you have the regulators watching from the sidelines, <laughs> but you have uh, an experimental, um, almost like a, um, a financier R&D um, project that, uh, that comes together to look at uh, these, these types of projects, look at the concerns, both from the regulatory perspective, from the meeting the asset manager's perspectives, and then really taking a, from, from the earlier talk today, when it talks about the green bond and the green market, moving it away from just uh, mitigation to more adaptation because of the type of infrastructure projects that GPIs would be looking at 30, 40, 50 years when they take on uh, th those projects could be, uh, you know, under, underwater with rising sea levels and so on in, in uh, low-lying coastal areas. So the type of infrastructure projects that need to be thought up now the technology that's going to be going into them from the smart cities uh, and, and so on. And um, the platform, blockchain, uh, what it's being done right now with, with the central banks, even Canada is doing Project Jasper and, and so on. So there, it is being done. The question is, is can it be done in a consortium? Can it be done in a way that uh, is standardized? And um, that really depends on you. Good. Okay, we'll leave that hanging in the air. Uh, uh, I rather like this idea of asset tokenization in a sandbox underwater. I, I, I like all those different mixed metaphors. Thank you very much indeed. It's been very entertaining, and we spent.